Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. So today, let's go over, of course, as usual, what happened in the market with Tesla, indices, all that good stuff. All that being said and done, let's just get into it. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to hit that like button. Tesla ending the day pretty much flat, actually, down 0.12%. Essentially, it didn't move. It moved literally a dollar. So essentially, no movement whatsoever. But uh, the one other thing, thing that's kind of... Whoa, what is this? Does that mean we ended at 838 or 840? It says 840 here. Maybe Weeble's being weird. I'm not really sure. It says we ended at 838, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this for what it is. But uh, <clears throat> regardless, so Tesla essentially ending extremely flat, right? Uh, I mean, slightly lower than yesterday's close, I guess. But you know, which I mean, it's not like ideal, I guess. But the fact that it was like so minimal underneath yesterday's close, it's. A, to the point where it's like you can pretty much write it off in my opinion on top of that like i know a lot of people like the 200 moving day average like i said i'm not the biggest fan of it but you know it is something to consider of all the moving averages the 200 and the 50 sometimes the 100 and 150 like those 50 increments are the only ones i would even remotely kind of consider or look at so 200 being a pretty big one probably the biggest one of them all uh, if you had to rank them i guess you know in order of like how important they are or how much you know weight i guess they hold i would argue 200 probably has you know the biggest weight um but essentially, we're holding right above it. I mean, or right under it, rather. So it's at 839.78. We're at literally a dollar under that. Which, again, you know, yeah, I closed under it. But, I mean, a dollar, it's like, you can you can kind of write that off. It's not that big of a deal, right? If it was, like, you know, so, like solidly under, like, you know, maybe, like, 836, 5, something like that. Then you're like, okay, well, that's, you know, now that's getting kind of, you know, it's, it's lower. It's definitely lower. But this is, whatever, not the biggest of deal. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that just yet. But regardless like taking a look at the time frame on the one hour i really like the one hour actually i'm starting to really like uh how it you know gives you an idea of what's you know what to look at what's gonna happen yeah I, it's it's I, I i i still stand by what i've been saying with how i think tesla is coming down to at least 810 uh to uh Gapville. i really do think that's gonna happen like if you one thing i like to look at is the fibonacci so if you take the fibonacci from here to here right roughly to the highs that we uh ended up touching over there let's change the color so it's a little bit easier to see because right now it's just very painful in the eyes so the yellow lines, of course, is what we're looking at. So we haven't even touched the 38.2, which is the 818. We actually touched that pre-market, I believe it was. Um, if I quickly change this to here, I'm pretty sure we touched that pre-market. Yeah, 818 exactly yesterday when we fell. Um, like last night, right before markets closed, like 10 minutes before, there was uh, news of how Russia is attacking the, um, I think it was like the, the, the nuclear power plant, I believe it was, in uh, Ukraine. And the second that news broke out, like the whole market started selling off. And we actually... I mean, aftermarket went straight down to the 38.2 Fibonacci, which, you know, is one of the retracements, but I personally don't think it's going to stop there. I personally think we'll come down to at least this gap fill, personally. Um, and again, the worst case I see is about 773, which is 61.8. Uh, I'll be surprised if we drop much lower, because you can see there is going to be some decent support uh, right around this, you know, level of, you know, 770, essentially. Um, so, you know, I would be pretty surprised if we don't hold around this level. Um, that would have to make the indices look very, very weak for us to not hold at least uh, at this level, like or at the, I guess at the worst, if you will, uh, at 770. So that's essentially what I'm looking at. Will we get to 770? I'm not entirely sure. I think it's definitely you know possible. Um, it's not necessarily the highest probability in my opinion. I think the highest for sure is like we're going to touch this 810, and then we'll see from there. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we do fall into the sevens a little bit. So you know we'll see what happens when we get there, of course. But for now, like I always say, I am still waiting for this 810 gap fill roughly. I am going to buy a little bit here and, uh, you know, get ready to start, you know, accumulating. But I'm not going to go like full on heavy mode in here just yet, I think. Only because, again, you know, I still think that there's a chance that we can drop it to the seven. So we'll see how that goes. Next Thursday, we have uh, February's, I believe, CPI data coming out, which is expected to be pretty bad. So that might also, of course, move the markets down even further. So we'll see how it goes, right, of course. So essentially, like I said earlier, you know, the thing we were looking at, you know, you can look at this as a double or a triple top, right? So essentially an M pattern, it could be like, you know, you moved up from these lows, uh, rejected. Uh, this is like the M being formed. You can kind of see the M like boom, 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 right? And then similar to how I talked about before the W, how it plays out the W, I mean, the M is literally the opposite version of it, of course, aka the bear version of it. So uh, top, top, you know, double rejection, and then you fall down similar to the way you climbed up. Uh, so that's one option, that, you know, we can play out here, which we have initiated because we broke below the, uh, essentially the neckline, which was this like 845-ish to 850 area. Uh, on top of that, you can also look at it as a triple top because we uh, got rejected here, got rejected here, got rejected here. Three times pretty much at the same spot, give or take a few dollars, of course. 
same concept and then once we broke this neckline ish area again around that 45 to 50 area yeah that's gonna be uh, pretty bad and you can see as we broke it we came down retested it failed retested it failed so the one thing that's i guess the only silver lining is the fact that after we failed the second test right here you can see we rejected down again but we rejected slightly lower like or rather slightly higher than this so we didn't go as far down as we did uh, right here so this kind of held a little bit higher than this not a lot obviously but you know it's a little bit so it's not too bad um, and if you look at it on the 15 minute chart this is where we had a few bear flags intraday coming up so you can see here as we fell bear flag and then we dropped bear flag and then we dropped and then we'll see what happens here this is like I still I think this is like the last chance for the bulls to take control this one little movement here like probably Monday honestly I would say is probably the last chance bear or rather bulls have a chance to gain some control and push us back up if they cannot do that then we're again pretty much for sure almost dropping down to not financial advice to this a10 level and we'll see from there um, and I'm, I'm still putting the probabilities much higher in the in the um, I guess in the chance that we are going to be at least touching this level so that's essentially what i'm currently eyeballing now keep in mind that once we drop to a10 like we're not going to just instantly bounce off of that and just go straight to the you know to the moon or something like that you know we might consolidate maybe we might go even lower so taking a look at the daily chart for instance actually let's take a look at the weekly every friday we should definitely take a look at the weekly so this is very important to keep in mind so remember how at the beginning of the week we kept like kind of dancing around this teal line that I kept bringing up over and over and over. Well, I mean, once the you know Friday closes, that's well, that's a weekly candle now finished. Take a look at the weekly candle. Very nice to do on Fridays to see how it performed because it gives you a very good broad picture of how you know the stock is looking and how you know the strength or the weakness is looking in a, a particular stock. In this case, Tesla. So in this case, as we broke down under this massive, um, in this case, resistance uh, teal trend line, that's been ever since like two years ago literally we came back retested it and you can see the rejection like just a very obvious rejection right it's just super 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 obvious i guess I, there's not really i'm trying to find like a bright side to this but there's not really a bright side to this in all honesty because yeah we just got straight rejected i guess not, there's nothing to even like say about that it's just a straight rejection uh and that's a pretty typical thing like usually when you break under something it's very common to come up to test it uh sometimes you can have a false breakout similar to how we had it up here you know, we came out and then we came back to retest it. Didn't succeed the retest, you can see here. This is a perfect example of not succeeding a retest. Uh, so this was a massive resistance. We broke out of it, came back down. Normally, you know, if this happened like this, we would have retested it similar to this, just flipped and then bounced up and continued moving to new all-time highs. In this case up here, we failed the retest. We broke back under, so it was a fake breakout, a fake out. And then we continued channeling and then going back down slowly because the strength was just gone from the bulls, right? Same concept here. As the bears pushed it down, the bulls pushed it back up. The retest was there and the bulls could not gain control and maintain above this teal line, which was important. This is the only way to can really consistently keep the momentum going right now in this stock. Uh, and we couldn't do that, unfortunately, which, you know, it is what it is. It's pretty common and I'm not surprised whatsoever because once something that breaks, that's been a very strong support for a very long time, the longer it was a strong support for, the more of a resistance it'll become if it ever breaks, which is exactly what happened here, which is why we got rejected. And now we're kind of, you know, probably going to be pushing down to the to the downside next week like i'll be extremely shocked if we at least either next week or the week after that don't see it further downside and start revisiting honestly at this point i wouldn't be surprised to see some 700s uh you know in tesla next week or the week after so that's essentially what i'm seeing right now guys you know let me know what you think again taking a very quick look at the indices you can see not the very strongest uh, of you know indices over here so if you take a look at the 30 minute you can see as we opened up i believe the qqq did actually gap fill yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, it's right here. Uh, we actually didn't even gap fill technically. We got really close to gap filling, but the QQQ didn't even have strength to gap fill. Uh, thankfully, it did hold above this 335 level. It didn't break that, which is good. So the bulls are trying their best to hold some control here. But the fact that we couldn't even gap fill this is like, you know, it, it's showing just how little control the bulls really have. Same thing on the QQ, or on the spine rather. You can see right as we kind of you know started this day off. Tried to push up and we just could not gap fill whatsoever. Again, similar concept, but you know, in this case, this is a more obvious looking bear flag being set up, right? A bear flag is essentially, of course, the opposite of a bull flag. So taking a look at like the 10 minute, it looks a little bit more of an obvious bear flag. All right, so this is essentially what it looks like, give or take. All right, so the very, very obvious bear flag. Again, usually these flags play out in a five touch point. So in this case, it'll be a one, two, three, four. So again, actually wouldn't be surprised to see potential gap fills maybe early next week sometime. 
could be a you know another bull trap coming in into a gap fill it will pretty much work exactly with this bear flag people will get excited but you know the gap will be filled there's probably gonna be a lot of resistance at this area people will put will put sell orders around this gap fill it'll be the top of the channel of the bear flag and then i wouldn't be surprised if we push down right from that as well same concept on the uh, qqq though it looks a little more sideways which could be like a bear pennant potentially right pennant and flag very similar concept so this could be something like this for instance uh, give or take, right? So keep that in mind, guys. That's essentially what I'm seeing at the very moment. O overall, like the market's looking kind of weak, so I wouldn't be too bullish just yet. I would be kind of chilling, getting ready, maybe get some cash ready to buy some dips coming up because I'm pretty sure we're about to get some dips, especially with CPI coming out on Thursday. Can't imagine that being, you know, very good news for us at the very moment. So guys, keep that in mind. That's all I have to say for today's video. Let me know what you think down below. Have a great weekend and I'll see you guys on Monday. So until then, peace.